Hey, well, I I didn't just finish. It was about an hour ago. I had a nap afterwards. Had to sleep on it. But I finished the first chapter or the first story in such a low and quiet sea, the Donald Ryan novel. I was rather underwhelmed. I thought the writing was really good. The story was really interesting. Something was missing. I didn't feel moved or connected to it. It felt somehow light, thin, perhaps fake. I almost said in my Voxer message to Curtis that I felt manipulated by this story, but I don't know if I'd go that far. But I was not impressed. I'm still waiting to hear how Curtis felt. But anyway, I'll read the second chapter, the second story, and for the best. Hey, well, I'm off to work this afternoon. Spent the morning reading. I've now read the second chapter. I don't think this is a novel. It's a collection of short stories. I'm not sure they're going to be linked. Apparently they get linked up somehow in the, in the end. So let me just natter on. The good news is I enjoyed the second story called Lampy. About ten times more then I did the first one called Farouk. Farouk is a story of a, the refugee crisis, the Syrian refugees coming across to Europe by boat. And I am suspicious about white writers writing about topics, writing about writing fiction with main characters who are not white. But I am not as I am not militant about it, in that I think anybody can write whatever they want. But the bar is really high for me. It has to really pass the smell test, and that story did not. He had no business writing about a Syrian refugee. It was so well-intentioned, it almost made me puke. But just to get back to, you know, kind of say more about where I kind of situate myself, my two most favorite novels were written by writers who were not of the same ethnic group or cultural or precise cultural background of the characters in their story. And you know, if you've been watching, if you watch more than one of my videos, you know I'm talking about Madeleine Tien's Do Not Say We Have Nothing and Oh My God, It's Hot. And Anthony Mara's constellation of vital phenomena. Madeleine Tian is Asian, but she's Malaysian Chinese. Her story was very much about Chinese Chinese, so that's the same thing. And as far as I know, Anthony Amara has no ethnic connection to Chechnya whatsoever. But those, but those books totally surpassed whatever smell test I have about authentic voices or any of that stuff. So I'm not very political. But this one didn't work because he didn't know what he was writing about and he's brought a liberal compassion to a story he didn't know how to tell and it didn't ring true at all so it didn't grab me. The second story is the kind of story he was born to write, literally. Set in a small rinky-dink Irish town about some loser people who I didn't like any of them and that didn't that made it an enjoyable read. Um, so that's not a criticism. And yeah, it was a good story. So it's not like I think you should write what you know. It's not like you I think you have to write what you know. But it takes a special kind of writer who can Imagine what they don't know and make it viscerally powerful. So there was a visceral power. You know, this one grabbed me much more. Well, the Syrian story didn't grab me at all. Okay, enough about that. But I, I having now read half the book, having now read, oh, here's, here's something you see in, in uh, Japan, I was gonna say in Ireland. Here's something you see in Ireland all the time. Those are the city workers. They park in their trucks and have a little snooze or on the phone. 
always wanted to show you that. Um, I'd say the second story, Lampy, was a four-star read. So this is kind of going to end up being a three or a four-star book unless things go south. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe there's only three stories. I'm confused. I think there's four. Anyway. Uh, oh, jeez, it's hot. There isn't very much stitching the first two stories together other than Donald Ryan inserting the most insipid, sentimental schlock into the mouths of two characters about kindness. Now, in Lampy, it was an old lady in an old folks home that said something like, you never know what's gonna happen in life and there's only one thing to do and just be kind to each other. Well, my grandma told me that. That'd be quite heartwarming and I would always remember it. Maybe even take it to heart. But when a novelist tells me that through the mouth of one of his characters, I just want to vomit. And there was the same message in the first story, that directly. And that's, if, if that's how he's linking these stories, this is a failure. Because, good lord. What is this, a children's book? Anyway, uh, I'll take advantage of waiting for the light here. The much happier news. I started this, I've only read 10 pages, and it knocked my socks off. It's really great writing, and it sucked me right in. It's about the Hijra, transgender, uh, in Bombay, and it's so good in a way that I've still yet to get invested in with Donald Ryan. So I'm glad that I reverted back to that so far. I mean, who knows, but it's going really well. Okay, I'm not, there's probably not gonna be as much local footage today because I think I'm gonna end up having a lot more to say about Donald Ryan and, and uh, Anosh Irani, if I can get time to get back to it also. And also now, once I get on the bus here, I'm going to put William Golding back in my ears. Shinjuku Station. In the middle of a very hot day. I am. Um, if I get a seat on this train, which occasionally I do, because sometimes this train originates from here and then it's completely empty, then I can sit and read hardcover novel. I don't really want to stand and let's see. Uh, well, I don't think I'm going to get it. Well, <clears throat> darn it all anyway, from a low and quiet sea is turning out to be quite a big disappointment. I'm not sure it's even going to make a three-star read now. The third story was really limp and uh, disappointing. Oh my god. And uh, the more I think on the second story, it was just that it was, the fact that it was better than the first one that I, you know, I've had a few hours now to think about it and no, it wasn't very good either. I mean, I'm not in love with this man's prose. It's sometimes good, but it's very uneven. And it didn't come back to me until later this afternoon that I really had a big problem with the way that uh, in the middle of that second story about Lammy or whatever his name was, it was like page long or half page long sentences that were just clauses joined by and. I mean, it was just really awful to read. Like, it's not, sometimes a long sentence can be lovely and well made, but these were just a string of sentences joined by and. That is gross. So no, I'm not in love with his writing. But I also don't want to over, be 
overly negative, but I can't think of one thing that I'm loving about this. This is not a this is not a book that it's probably the best book. No, I'm not going to talk about Booker stuff. Um, the third story, I don't remember the name of the guy, but here the the morality that made me sick in the first two is framed by that this story is in the form of a confession. So that's the religiosity of that was boring. And this character is so unlikable that he's not interesting. That he's not unlikable in an interesting way. So I have now watched most of Matthew Shirappa's review. I'm only watching it a little bit at a time once I've read the story that he's talked about. I, I'll watch that part and uh, quite surprised at how much we're agreeing because we usually not we, well, usually we just have almost polar opposite reactions to books and I several things he said I had the exact same thought not as well articulated. So yeah he's he kind of gave voice to there's stories, fairy tale stories, in uh, the first two stories that I didn't like. I didn't think, I thought they were, well, and I'm, now I'm going to be quoting Matthew because I hadn't been able to formulate it. But Matthew said, if I'm remembering, he said, they're just kind of tapped, they're just kind of slapped in there and made to do work that the writer doesn't want to do. Like, oh, the, the, reflect on the resonance between the nested fairy story and and the rest, and now I don't have to write anything. Yeah, there's, I, that's, that really nailed it, I thought. And the third story ends with a two-page dream. And I fucking hate dreams in fiction. And this was like a nested story, too, because you're supposed to, oh, this is... This is what the story all means, like to tie it all up by an extended dream? That was a horrible ending. Yeah, no, I'm really disappointed. What's going on here? We got release vans and... I teach at this office nearby and it's only a couple blocks from the American Embassy. And I teach here twice a week. And one day when Obama was visiting, I saw his limousine go by and I was only a half a block from... I knew it was him, I knew he was in town and I knew it was him because people were standing waving when he went by, so that's the closest I ever got. Anyway, do I have anything else to say about this low, quiet sea? It's not low, and you know, there's the imagery of water that's in each story too, but that's not very impressive. Who cares about that? It's not effective. Yeah. And what's up with... I have read so many books that seem to be straddling the line between a short story collection, a short story cycle, or a novel. And most of them aren't very good, and this is one like that too. Now apparently he does tie everything together in the fourth and final story, but I don't have my hopes up too high that I'm going to be impressed. But I would like to stay open to being impressed, so I'll report back. Hey guys, well this seemed like a good idea at the time, sitting on this lit staircase on some building a block from my house as I was walking by. I'm not sure how it's going to look in post-production, but <laughs> anyway, uh, just to wrap up the day, because I'm tired. And so I'm not, you know, I can't say anything eloquent about the Donald Ryan novel, which I finished about two hours ago. I would say that he redeemed himself to a certain extent by the concluding chapter, if it's a novel, or the concluding story, uh, but in a way that uh, there were some really poignant scenes in the way that he drew the characters together, but I still felt really kind of uh, manipulated, but part of my sucky uh, self loved being manipulated. There were a couple really powerful connections between the characters that I didn't, I didn't give a rat's ass about any of these characters in the first three stories. 
and he did make me care about a couple of them the grandfather and the grandson and and the mother so those three generations they came alive on the page for me in the way that he kind of showed them in opening to, to each other or to other characters but it was still a really unsuccessful novel the the success of the conclusion bumped it back up from where it had been sitting at two stars which for me is a book that was means a book I really didn't like to three stars which for me is a book that I didn't like I know that some people use three stars as a book that's good but not great no for me a three star book is a book that's not good so this was not a good novel he's a great writer sentence level there were some beautiful sentences some beautiful descriptive passages but it was a hot mess for the most part and I'm not sure that you know there was a lot of narrative dog and pony tricks to get all that to match up and connect at the end and I don't think it was necessary and it was kind of ridiculous so not a powerful read for me I bet it does win the Booker compared to how shitty everything else sounds but I said I wasn't gonna talk about Booker stuff <laughs> but it's probably the best written of the ones there. And because I didn't like it, it's probably gonna win. Glad I read it. It was fun to read it with uh, Curtis, Buddy Read It. It's our first Buddy Read with the time zone. I was almost finished by the time he and I could connect, but we had some responses the same. Our ultimate evaluation, he's not much of a, a star rater, but we basically agreed on that. Agreed on some things and disagreed, had different experiences of other sections but it was it was really fun so i am much more excited about the anash irani novel the parcel i've only managed to read about 25 pages today but it's really gripping so my plan is tomorrow to read get to the halfway point with that novel so that i can finish it up on thursday that's ambitious but maybe i can do it and to read from start to finish we think the world of you by J.R. Ackerley, J.R. J.R. Ackerley, and I'm, I'm excited about those reads, and I'm really excited to be reading as this much in se a seven-day period. I, whether I manage to get seven books read or not, uh, I used to read a lot more than I have been reading this year, and I'm not sure that I want to keep this pace up, but it's been really exhilarating to amp up my reading. It's, in a curious way taking a lot of stress off about the personal events that are upcoming which are very joyous events but about which I would probably be stressing out a lot more were I not trying to read a book a day. That's all for now. See you tomorrow.